Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another software architecture and Go video. In today's episode, I'm talking about security, specifically vulnerability management. This is a new feature that was added to Go a few weeks ago. It's not yet part of the official toolchain, but you can still use it nowadays. It consists of a vulnerability database that is being fed by different data sources. Those include the national vulnerability database, GitHub uh, security advisory, as well as the ones that we can submit as package maintainers and those that are going to be added by the Go team. This data source, this database is going to be used to power a few different tools and services. At the moment, one that I'm going to be showing you, I will show you three different examples, is the Go Vault Check that is going to be detecting vulnerabilities in the code and in your binaries but this also is available in the Go Patch Discovery site, and I think it's going to be added soon to a plugin in Visual Code. So let me show you the three examples. As usual, the link to the code is in the description of this video, so feel free to check it out. The first example I'm going to be showing you is one using the standard library, or rather a bug detected in the standard library. And typically, the way vulnerability services like Snyk, which I covered in a previous video regarding security, and dependencies, I'm leaving the link in the description as well, it, it is going to be reading the vendor uh, package or file that is defining the, the values and versions of the packages that you import, typically gosum and gomod, go.mod, go.sum. So if I go back and look at the one that I imported already, you will notice that I do not have any vulnerability because, you know, the program is really simple and let me show you that. The way it works is, is using this new API that was added in 1.19 that includes a bug like I told you before. So if we go and open the readme, I added instructions for compiling this using a Docker container. You can do what I just showed you or you build it with this concrete standard, you know, binary to compile your, uh, your file. But I'm doing it here because it's a little bit easier. So if I run the Go 119 binary, you will notice that it's printing out the values incorrectly. But if I go and try using the version 1.18, you will notice that now it's going to be printing out the values correctly. And the values correctly will be referring to what I have in this case right here. And if I do the same with the Go line 1.19 version, you will see that now this one is the value that we should be expecting compared to this one that now has the dot dot that we shouldn't be having in the first place, which is right here. Now, if we use the govoldian check uh, binary that we installed and the instructions are in the readme as well, so feel free to check that out. You will do a govold check and you will indicate the binary. In this case, I want to use the one that has a bug. So if I run it like this, you will see that now I have the vulnerability indicated right here. If I go and do the same, but with the one that was already fixed, you won't see that problem anymore because it's referencing to the binary itself. This is really powerful because you remember that in Go, when you're using modules, we are always referring to the minor version, not the patch. So there is no way to determine for typically most of the services that provide some sort of scanning vulnerabilities, there is no way to detect those issues without uh, without accessing the actual bin binary. So this is super cool because it's the biggest difference compared to what we can have with a Sneak or maybe MAND or maybe other providers that we are available. Now, let me show you another example using a third-party library. Now, using a third-party library is similar to what we did before, but instead of running the binary, I want to show you the other way to do it, which will be using packages, and will be the syntax will be like this. So instead of using the binary name, I haven't compiled anything. Let me show you, there is nothing compiled here. I'm just going to do the following check, and the three three dots to indicate what's happening. Now, this one will be calling an issue that is right here, this vulnerability that I'm importing the package, the YAML 3.0 version, and there is an issue with that. If I go and show you the code, you will notice that what it's doing is literally referring to what I do, what the vulnerability is describing. If I go and show you the actual 
a sneak version of this, you will notice that it's actually, well, it's been reported by a sneak as well. So I think both of them work, right? But let me show you another example. And this is really cool because there are cases where you don't use that concrete function that is being uh, vulnerable in your code. Let me show you. So this is the third and last example, and I think this is one of the best one, best features I have seen recently regarding vulnerability scanners nowadays. One of the things about this one in particular that calls out my attention is that, hey, I'm importing this buggy package. Specifically, let me open the com mod to show you the version that is being uh, affected, which is still the same 3.0.0. And, but it's still, however, I'm not actually using the function that is uh, being affected. Uh, if you recall the code a while back, the issue was in the on Marshall. I'm here, I'm using, well, I'm using Marshall, but not the on Marshall. Therefore, I'm not using the vulnerable function that is included in the package. However, typically, services like a Sneak, for example, I have nothing about the Sneak. Uh, what I'm trying to show you is that when using GoVuln and check, this is really specific to the Go code itself, not just some checking of the Go mod or the Go some files that determine what version is being imported. In the case of a sneak, well, it's looking at the, yeah, sure, it's looking at the way that it, we are importing the file or the package that is vulnerable, but really we're not using it. So probably when we are working an enterprise, maybe we could define the priority a little bit lower. Yes, we have to update the package. That's, that's for sure. But we don't have it to we don't have to update it right away because in the first place we are not using it. So what happens if I use the go go volume check file of, or application writer or the binary? If I do a go volume check, you will notice that hey, is it still going to report that is there is a vulnerability? But my code doesn't happen to include those values in here. If you notice you may not take an action or you may do depending on your priorities and this is i think the biggest differentiator it's not going to give you noisy reports or what you have in your code it's going to still report those but it will tell you hey it's up to you if you want to update or not so let's jump to the conclusions so that's it this is the new vulnerability management in go it's a brand new feature that i really really like one because it's included in the go it's going to be included officially in the go toolchain it's detecting the issues that you have locally in your binary from previous versions in the standard library and also it determines whether you're using an affected function that was vulnerable already so this is this is really cool and also another thing that may be important for you it's free it's already part of the tool chain so you don't have to pay a new service you don't have to you know push your code outside of the boundaries of your enterprise for example it's already in there now, we need to wait and see the new improvements that are going to be coming soon. I'm looking forward to see what is going to happen. So I'm really excited for this one in particular. That's it. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time. Take care. Stay safe. See you.